breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I, too, have seen Jesus. It was the spring of 2008. I was walking down 8th Avenue in Manhattan on my way to Penn Station. I was returning from visiting Stephanie in New York. He called out to me from the sidewalk where he was sitting in a pile of filthy clothing and belongings. I had my headphones in and my eyes down, and I replied, Sorry, I haven't got any. I met spare change. And that's when he started yelling at me. And that's when I saw him. I mean, I actually saw him. I hadn't even really seen a human being sitting there before, just a silhouette on a sidewalk. A panhandler. A nuisance, an obstacle to me reaching my destination. When he got agitated, I took out my headphones so I could hear what he was saying. He was angry. He was hurt. He was offended. He'd seen the cross necklace that I was wearing, the Jesus patch pinned to my hoodie, and he'd called out to me, God bless you, brother, to which I replied, Sorry, haven't got any. And then my eyes were opened. The fish scales fell away, and I beheld the Son of Man sitting on his throne in the glory of God. It wasn't like the pictures. There were no rays of light, no gold or precious gems or clouds, no glittering crown, no flowing hair, no peaceful complexion. Now, maybe at this point you're thinking I'm speaking figuratively, but I'm not. I'm not talking about, as you do to the least of these, you do to me. I'm being literal. It was Jesus in the flesh, no doubt. He was made known to me in the breaking of my heart. Haven't you ever wondered how Cleopas and his companion could walk with Jesus for seven miles? without recognizing who he was? What St. Luke means when he writes their eyes were kept from recognizing him? I don't. Not anymore. I know exactly what he means because it happened to me. I saw Jesus. I walked right past him sitting on the sidewalk on 8th Avenue. I didn't see him at first because I wasn't looking. I wonder if the same might have been true for Cleopas and his friend. I mean, Jesus was dead after all, right? Why would they ever think to see him on the road to Emmaus, a little village like Emmaus? How could he possibly be there? Even if, they, if, even if he had looked exactly as they remembered him, would they have known him? Could they have known him? Or would they have thought that it was just a trick of the eyes, a hallucination of their grief? Because Cleopas and his friend knew what had happened in Jerusalem in those days. Jesus, the mighty prophet, had been condemned to death and crucified. They had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel, but clearly he wasn't. Of this, they seem to be quite certain. And I wonder if it's that certainty that might have kept them from seeing. I wonder because I know that's what was true for me. As soon as I saw that lump of clothing and cardboard on the sidewalk, I knew immediately what I was looking at and what to expect. I knew that this man was going to ask me for money, that he was going to use it for drugs or alcohol or something else that he didn't need. I knew he was going to accost me, and I didn't want to be accosted, and so I left my headphones in, and I cast my eyes down, and I blinded myself. And I must confess to you, my friends, that this story still makes me feel sadness and remorse and regret. I still think about what I would like to say to that man. 
I still feel the burn of shame when I think about who I showed myself to be in that moment. Walking down the sidewalk, wearing my cross necklace, wearing my Jesus patch. Although I held no hammer, I crucified Jesus then so that I wouldn't see him or hear what he had to say, just like the chief priests and the leaders of the people. Peter concludes his sermon today, the one he started last week with a stark accusation. This Jesus whom you crucified, he says. And when his audience responds, Peter immediately, immediately draws that accusation into a blessing. This promise is for you. You who crucified Jesus. Where we might expect condemnation or vengeance or abandonment, God instead extends this promise of repentance, of the Holy Spirit, and of new life. In that moment on 8th Avenue, Jesus not only showed me himself, but the incredible love of God. A love that was not going to let me walk away down that sidewalk without observing what I had so intentionally tried to miss. Love that was not going to let me go until it blessed me. Until it changed me. Called me by a new name. Yes, that experience was very painful, but it changed me for the better. In that moment that I saw Jesus, I too was crucified, and I was raised to new life. In that moment, I was repented. My mind was opened, and my heart was reoriented, and I received a life that was more abundant than it had been before. Because ever since then, I have been looking for Jesus waiting to see where he might appear next. And that's why I share this story with you. Not to caution you against my mistake, not to strike fear into your hearts about God's judgment, but to share good news. Yes, this story makes me feel regret and shame and sadness, but it also fills me with joy and hope and wonder and excitement. I share this story with you because it's a story of my own redemption. Remember that Cleopas had said that they had hoped Jesus would be the one to redeem Israel. Right? Do you wonder what he meant by that? I know I do. What were they hoping for? What did they feel that Israel needed to be redeemed from? Roman occupation, perhaps? Whatever it is, they are convinced that the actions of the chief priests and the leaders of the people have obstructed and opposed what God was doing. But as Jesus comes alongside them, he opens their hearts to a new story. One in which God is actually working through the events of these past days. And that idea that God can take what is evil and wrong and harmful and turn it to God's own purposes... That's called redemption. It's maybe not the redemption that they were looking for, but it's redemption. My callousness and lack of compassion was redeemed by God on 8th Avenue as that act of sin became the means by which I died and was reborn. In that same way, the rejection and crucifixion of Jesus was redeemed when it became the incitement to repentance for the people listening to Peter's sermon. In the same way, Jesus' death is redeemed by God when he is resurrected to new life. What is evil and harmful and painful does not disappear, nor is it balanced out, but it is taken and made the raw material for a new creation. The crucified one becomes the resurrected one, still bearing the marks of the nails in his hands. I wonder what it is that we are hoping to be saved from. What are we hoping for God to redeem? What are the promises we fear we will never see fulfilled? 
Maybe it's something personal like my story, a story of fault or mistake or some source of guilt. Maybe it's something big and cosmic, something like climate change or war or income inequality. Whatever it might be, I wonder if sometimes we might have our eyes so firmly set on the solution that we wish to see that we are kept from recognizing the redemption of God walking right alongside us. I am here to tell you, on this third Sunday in Easter, that I have seen the risen Christ. It's a story of my shame. But my shame is my glory. Because in that moment, when I was maybe not at my worst, but certainly not at my best, God came to me and saved me from my futile ways, from a life that I didn't want to live and gave me a new one in its place. I share this story with you because Christ is risen and I have seen him. And if he is risen, it means our hopes are not dashed and our salvation is not thwarted and God's promise is not lost. If he is risen, it means our redemption is at hand. Did you notice how Cleopas' traveling companion is never named? It seems odd, doesn't it? That we should hear Cleopas' name, even though he never appears anywhere else in the entire Bible, but not the name of his friend. I have to wonder if that might be intentional. Or maybe we do already know that fellow traveler's name. I know that along with my friend Cleopas, I saw Jesus in the last place I ever expected on the road to Penn Station, and that I was changed by that experience. I'd be willing to bet we all have. Maybe the missing name in the story is our own. Maybe it was Seth who traveled with Cleopas to Emmaus, or Pam, or Dick, Don. Kathy, or Bruce. Maybe each of us meets the risen Jesus again and again and again. The question is whether we recognize him.